So in this video, we're gonna start disassembling the 900D and getting everything in there out, cleaned up and ready to be transferred over onto the engine block. At least everything that we're gonna use. Now, our setup area is right here. So this is my Logitech G25 on a, excuse me, a Specti SIM rig. Um, I've used this G25 like since they came out. It's been amazing. It's never stopped working. I've never had a reason to replace it. Like for everything that I do in, in like sim racing, it's not competitive. It's just for fun. This is more than enough for that. Uh, if I was were to become competitive, obviously I would move on to like a Fanatic setup or or what have you. But uh, it, it's just, it doesn't stop working. And until it stops working, I'm not gonna replace it essentially. And so that's why I'm still using that. Um, I gotta figure out a spot to put the block. I'm pretty sure it's gonna go on this table over here. I'm gonna set it up on that and move this over. So these two cases that have all my figures and like my favorite games, they're gonna get shoved over and then I'll move this over and put the table that's there, that one. It's gonna go right there and this is gonna go right on top of it. And that'll be like my little sim setup, which will give me more room for more games on top of there. Okay, let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is probably remove all the important things before I start draining. So obviously, I'm gonna take out the video card. Right there. There we go. There's a 6900 XT. I actually really like the way this card looks. It's super, it's like very reserved, but also like super modern looking. I don't know, I like it. I think it'll look good on the engine too. So there's that out of the way. Next, I think the easiest thing to do would probably just be to drain it first. So we'll disconnect this, lift it out and pour it by just unscrewing the top here. We'll pour it into my really really classy vase instead of a pail or something because for whatever reason I have a pail of a vase so I'm gonna use that All right, so here's the board. This is the Asus Crosshair 6 Extreme Edition with a Bitsky, uh, or sorry, with a Bits Power monoblock on it. It's also ROG branded specifically for this board. I love this board. Um, it's probably like, I guess my first really high end board would be my Rampage 4 Black Edition. But then this was the next Extreme Edition board that I ever got and that was uh, this one and I love it. And I'm gonna keep it forever and probably use it again. But uh, yeah, it's got a heat sink on the back. Fucking awesome board, looks cool. Does, has so many different features, RGB everywhere, all along the sides, all the PCI lines light up. It's a, it's a super cool board. Um, and it sucks that it doesn't fit on that uh, ender block, otherwise I would've used it, but it is what it is. I will put this into another build again soon probably.
So this is where I plan on putting it. I don't think I'm gonna use that table that's off in the corner there. I think what I'm gonna do is have it up here on top of the shelf. And I was thinking about orienting it this way. I'm not so sure. It's probably gonna turn the other way, which I'm gonna quickly do. And I'm gonna walk you through my plan. Okay, so it's gonna stick a bit off the edge of the, the shelf here, but that's fine. It's just gonna be a bit more prominent, probably grab your attention more, not <laughs> as if it isn't going to anyways, because it's a fucking engine block above a bunch of retro PS1 games. Um, so this is how I'm gonna sort of set it up. And if we take this, we go here, that's how it's gonna sit. Something like that. Again, you've seen the images and the video and all the other stuff beforehand of what it used to look like when it was assembled. Um, so you have a rough idea. Now, what I'm thinking this time around is maybe for now, doing one side with the fans and the radiators and the other side open with lights shining through. I have a long RGB strip that can go along the underside here and illuminate the cylinders. So you'll be able to see those, see that it's still an engine block and leave that exposed. I think that'd be pretty cool. Again, I have that start button or power button rather over here. And that is what will turn the computer on and off. And that fits right in the front there where the uh, water pump goes. So I'm thinking that this is probably where it's gonna stay. Um, a little bit of it sticks off, but it's not that big a deal. It's not going to go anywhere and you get a pretty good view of it. It's right next to the sim rig as well as the uh, the mount for the monitor stands right there. So or it's story the monitor arm. So when I reattach a monitor there to see and get in the games and yada, 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 uh, it doesn't get in the way of that or anything. So that's good. Uh, I've assembled a custom motherboard tray that's used as like a test bench and how this works it's a series of different length, essentially just pieces of aluminum. And you slide these L brackets like into the slots. And that allows for connecting different angles like these here. So I've assembled one like this. So it rests on the V of each side. The uh, little stands here that you would attach the motherboard to. You can slide them and then you tighten them down in place with these screws. So that's how the motherboard's gonna be mounted. Look at how small this thing is. I also got a riser because I wanna have the uh, GPU up and above. I'm gonna mount it something like that. So that this sits up top above everything, sort of like this. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of where I'm at now. Now it's just troubleshooting and figuring out exactly how I'm going to set it up. Uh, so yeah, just a lot of processing right now and thinking <laughs> and uh, problem solving. So I'm going to keep working away at this till I come up with a solution. And then I will show you guys what I come up with. Here's another quick update. So I've gone ahead and removed the monoblock from the Extreme Edition board. Uh, there's a 3900X. So I'm gonna clean up all that thermal paste, remove it. I've already removed the back plate and original uh, mounting hardware from the X570 board, as you can see. So I'm gonna go ahead, put the uh, 3900X into here, attach the new block to that. I'm gonna add my m.2 drives one on the back right down here and one underneath here under this heat sink and that'll be both of those from there which there's one here and there's another one under here put those on there put the cpu on mount the block this is the tray i tried doing a like a vertical mount but remounted horizontal and have it sticking off the top like this. So the video card, where is it? It would be sitting like this above the whole setup on top of there. And uh, I just couldn't get it to look right. Uh, it ended up just looking quite jank. 
so hold on, I need to set this somewhere. There you go. Uh, I didn't like how it looked, so I ended up going with the traditional mounting it on the board for now. I think the reason that it looks sort of off is because the last one was on a water block already for the last version I did of this, where this is still air cooled. So I'm going to stick with this and then once I get a block for it, switch it over to water and that'll sort of clean everything up and make it similar to the way it was before. But you know, table's a mess, working away, I'll give you another update in no time. I've got the block mounted, uh, CPU's in, both of the M.2 drives are in, See, one on the back, there's one under here. Uh, that's ready to get repacked up and put up on the shelf with the others. Uh, next I gotta clean up, organize this, because this is how the uh, RGB and the pump, or sorry, how the RGB works on this is uh, it's got this proprietary connector here, which goes into a three pin RGB, so a 12 volt. And that, I'm pretty sure I need three of them. I need one for the pump res combo, which is down there, one for this, and I also need one for this strip here. This is going to run underneath the uh, engine block and sort of illuminate the underside and uh, possibly shine through. This, I'm not sure if I'm going to have this on. If I'm just going to do one and leave this open to show the cylinders and have the other side be the radiator for now. And that way the cylinders can be illuminated when I put that RGB strip in. Or if I'm going to do it like this and just have no fans so you sort of get the light from the inside of the cylinders shining through. I think that might be kind of cool. Um, because again, all we're cooling right now is the CPU. So dual 480s is overkill. So even if I just have coolant flowing through here without any fans and just letting the light shine through, I think that might be interesting. Only because another reason is this is like a two inch thick core. This is an inch or inch and a half. And so the fans sort of make up that thickness so by not adding fans here, it adds, or sorry, it, it sort of balances it out. Um, anyways, I'm just, I'll figure it out as I do it. Uh, also, <laughs> there's where the rod went through the block. Should be another one on the other side, and there is. Yep. So, now it gets to be a computer again. So I have everything mounted now. So the dual 480s are both on, uh, the pump and res combo is on, all the hoses are ran. So again, I ran them underneath through the crankcase and then up around the back. So pump into this one, up into the block, out of the block, into this one, and then out, back in. So this is pretty much how it's going to be. There's only so much I can do with the general design of the, the block. Like this is the way the radiators have to lay. And um, also I did vacuum all this out and clean it. It's just like almost permanently stained inside the fins from uh, just dust and everything else. So unless I can get like in between them, you can't really get at it. So once the fans are on here, you won't see that because you can see straight through it. Like it's not dirty. It just looks dirty. Um, similar story on this side. But like you can go all the way through there anyways uh but other than that there's really not much else i can do to improve on the original design i wanted to lay like the gpu flat underneath so it can be even more like streamlined up top but again i can't do that until i have a block and what i would be thinking is uh here run a tube underneath to a 90 degree fitting that would be on the top of the block here the fitting would go in there then another 90 degree fitting opposite of it facing the other direction and have it come up underneath or come out over here so or no that wouldn't work it would be here actually yeah it would work so it'd be into here then out into the gpu and then through the underneath 
out into the radiator. And then that way I can lay this flat underneath everything because there is enough room. Like it for sure would fit under there. Especially the 3080 that I was using the last time I built this because that's a very short card once you put the block on it. And that would fit in there no problem. You wouldn't be able to see it, but that's fine because it would be sort of like designed that way. But uh, now I'm going to set you up and I'm going to fill it and we're going to do a first startup. So if everything goes bad, you'll be able to watch it. All right, here we go. Click the power. I'm going to have to do this quickly. Did want to get water through it, but uh, oh well, it does nothing. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the PSU situation here. Now, in order to make it fit, uh, this would have to be further away from the wall for me to mount it in behind. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that in a different clip, but I'm just gonna go over it again quickly in case I didn't. Um, so in order to fit it behind, like I originally had it mounted the first time I built this, uh, I need more space behind it, obviously, but there's a wall there. So before I used to have it on my desk and I had a ton of space because it was more of the desk plus then the wall behind it. And it was not an issue at all. But now having it up against the wall and like on this sort of small space next to the sim rig uh, i have no choice but to put it to either side so what i've done is obviously i've mounted it on a ryzen 5 box i put a uh, anti-static bag behind it i mean it would be fine normally i, I wouldn't worry about it but uh, just to be double safe i have it on anti-static bag right here and uh, i'm gonna leave it mounted like that i have another shelf just like these so this one and this one coming tomorrow and I'm gonna set that there. And that's where all my PS2 games are gonna go because I have a bunch of them there just stacked. Like down here is where I keep, you know, a lot of them. And it overflows over here just because I have like no room anywhere for my PS2 collection, as you can see. So another one of those shelves is gonna go right here and it's gonna fit perfectly in that space. And this is gonna essentially be blocked. So you won't be able to see it. Um, functionally it's going to do the job it's going to be no issues whatsoever uh aesthetically yeah it's sitting over there on top of a box but the fact that a shelf is going in the way and you won't be able to see it at all makes it completely irrelevant and it allows me to put the case as far back the case the engine as far back against the wall as i can final piece of the puzzle the fans now all the fans i was using originally on this were nzxt hue fans but uh, all of those are upstairs in my main computer. So I needed more fans. I have a ton of 120s, but they're like some red, some green, different manufacturers. I didn't want to mix and match. So I just picked up 10 of these uh, Easy Fab fans off of uh, Amazon. And uh, that should do the trick. The only thing is they're proprietary and they run through this uh, controller here. I need eight of them, but the controller only outputs for six. So I got to use two of those. A little bit annoying. I wanted to have like as few things as possible, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and get those put onto there and uh, we'll see how it looks. I have the fans mounted on the right side. Um, the only issue is just the amount of cabling that's left at the end. So what I've done is I've ran each wire underneath each screw and as you get further along you end up with more and more yeah and the connector i've used the adhesive that's built onto it and i stuck it onto the back of the radiator so now everything sort of just goes up to the back and meets there um i have the other sata power available for the back of this one and i'll run the exact same way on that side just again there's just so many cables back here that i wish i could have hid somewhere else but at the same like <sighs> At the end of the day, it's going to be up against the wall. The wall's black. Uh, that's black. It's not going to be too bad. And for the most part, like, that's what you're going to see. And again, this is all controlled uh, via the remote. It's not done through software or anything. So you get one of these. And, uh, yeah. Turn it on, off, pause it, whatever you want. 
there's off, there's on, there's red, which is typically how it's going to be. And you can adjust brightness and so on and so forth. Just give it like a nice mild or really hot and bright. Here it is. Completely finished. There may be a little bit of tidying up to do here and there in terms of cabling and whatnot, but overall it is done. Uh, it looks very similar to the way it did originally. There's only so much you can do with it, which is kind of unfortunate, but again, I mean, my very first iteration was completely different than my second one. And I think all the improvements that I could have made was done on the second iteration. You can see that in my original video that I released back in March of 2021. Uh, I originally had the motherboard stood up. It was a EATX board. These radiators were standing vertical. You could see the uh, the cylinder cert, which I thought was kind of neat. But other than that, it was a very sloppy and messy looking design. Second iteration, very similar to this. I did have a water cooled 3080 instead of a 6900 XT. Um, and that is a much smaller card. When water cooled, it ends about here. So it's a very short card, made it a bit cleaner, very thin. What I can do is obviously put the 6900 XT onto a block as well, which I will. Until then, it'll look like this, which I think is not too bad. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a engine themed computer. So you can tell it used to be an engine. You can see the engine block and all that, but you can also see computer components on it too. So I think it plays in well and it's not, not, not too bad. Um, on the third iteration, which is this one, the only thing different that I really could do was there's no more external storage. So on this side of the engine block on my desk, I had a hard drive caddy that had four, uh, three and a half inch drives, as well as I had two, two and a half inch drives underneath the motherboard tray. This has none of that. It's strictly M.2 storage now. So there's a one terabyte for games. And then there's a 512 gig for the operating system. And all it runs is sim racing games. There's a few uh, regular VR games that I'll have on here too, because this is a HP Reverb G2. And it does have controllers, so you can do room scale. It's inside out tracking. However, I do have my HTC Vive, or sorry, my Valve Index controllers up there that I use with my HTC Vive. And you can make those work with this and that will give you finger tracking and everything else. So I will end up doing that because I do have a pretty good play space here in my uh, retro gaming area, as well as modern gaming, obviously. So in that area, I can, you know, use that space for uh, room scale VR. I do have it set up upstairs, but I would like to remove those from the wall and, and sort of clean all that up and just use it strictly down here. Now, over to the sim setup itself. Oh, another thing. I've been running a stress test since I turned it on. So for about, I don't know, does it say how long on there? Uh, I can't see. It's, it's honestly been about 10 minutes and it's still running the test. And the max temperature, 63C. Power consumption, 125 watts. Lowest temperature, 27C. So dual 480s on a 12 core, 24 thread CPU running four and a half gigahertz on all cores and 63C is as hot as it's gonna get. It won't go any higher. It's been about 10 minutes and nothing's changed. Let's, uh, let's stop the test. Turn that back on, we'll stop it. We'll see how quickly it drops down. Fifty-three, fifty-two, fifty, forty-eight, forty-seven. Down it goes. We'll come back and see where it settles. But yeah, overall, I'm super thrilled. It's it's back to the way it was. Like I said, it used to sit up here just on display because I disassembled everything and built it into my computer that's upstairs, and. Uh, I sort of was done with this because I didn't want it on my desk anymore just because my new living room yada 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 didn't fit the bill. Now it can stay like this forever down in my games room. It's strictly a VR sim rig for uh, racing so it fits the theme. It's perfect. 
what else? Mounted a monitor, obviously, to the side of the shelf, so that when I'm, I'm sitting in here, I need to get into a game. I use my wireless keyboard, and I just do what I have to do, put the headset back on, boom, you're racing. Before, I used to have it hooked up to that TV there with an HDMI cable, and you'd have to come out of VR and look over there and blah, 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 and someone else couldn't be playing games at the same time. You had to use either that or this. There was no in-between because you needed that TV. Now, completely standalone. It's on an arm as well, so it can come out, go in front, wherever you need it to be. I just leave it like that because it's fine. You just look to the left, do your thing, and get back in. Honestly, couldn't be happier. Super, super thrilled. Like I said, the next thing is a water block for the 6900 XT. Doesn't need it, but in terms of aesthetics, uh, I would like to get one and possibly lay the card flat underneath and have it, you know, just be the, the tubes being the high point of it and the GPU underneath because we can run the hose from inlet, outlet to the GPU, 90 degree fitting out underneath the tray and into the uh, other 480 and then back into here. But these are all ideas for another time. So now I'm going to go ahead and build that shelf. Put it here and I'll give you guys a look at the completely finished area and that'll be that.